Today we're gonna react to Tom Brady's insane watch collection. Insane it is, and I do believe that we should reintroduce the money counter for this video. I think we need to. Yeah? It took a while for us to actually be able to do this video. Yes. He's been sponsored for like the past three years we've been on YouTube, so it would have been IWC and Ty Coyer. Yeah, that would be a very cheap video. This time, it's gonna be worth watching. One of the most valuable collections I've seen to date. Before we get into the video, make sure you subscribe to the channel now, and if you wanna buy or sell your watch, Brian opinion.com this video is sponsored by Shopify but more on that later oh. <laughs> what is this oh. 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 <laughs> I didn't realize you were flipped. Alright. We tried to download Mr. Beast video with Tom Brady in it, and even though the video was in English, it just downloaded in Spanish. This is not Spanish, am I? B I don't speak it. This is full blown Arabic. Let me really quickly look. Yeah, it looks like pushers. Watch spotting isn't the easiest thing in the world, you know? Turn it, you bitch! I'm just missing out that real angle here. I can't see what it is. It looks like a chronograph, so Army 11 probably. RM65, can't see what it is. But let me tell you one thing, this watch is gonna be worth more than $300,000. We'll be lenient and put 300 on the counter. It's more than 300,000, so you can put 300 on. We'll put 302. Do whatever you want. I would love to know what it actually is. So if you know, drop it in the comments right now. Right, let's move on to a watch we can actually see. This is a really special Rolex Daytona with a really, really, really weird story. He's actually one of the first people in the entire world to have the Rolex Daytona Le Mans on his wrist, spotted and all. Of course, Mark Wahlberg had one as well. But I mean, he's one of the first people ever. And this watch has a really interesting story, to be honest, because a Effectively, this watch celebrates two anniversaries. First, the 100th anniversary of the Le Mans races and the unspoken 60th anniversary of the Rolex Daytona. Did you know that the Rolex Daytona was initially called the Rolex Le Mans and it wasn't called Daytona? They changed their mind and they named it the Rolex Daytona. It's actually a really cool story with a lot of history towards the first generation 63.9. It is a wee bit weird how Rolex introduced this watch randomly as a surprise like bomb a solid white gold daytona that celebrated the anniversary of le mans but not of the daytona after watches and wonders really weird why did they not release it at watches and wonders I actually think it's because Rolex wanted several moments of hype around the line of Daytonas because during the last Watches and Wonders, Rolex introduced a complete new line of Daytonas with new bezel, new movement, completely new. It looks quite similar, but it is completely new. Then introducing an anniversary model at the same time, maybe that could have taken the buzz away from this. If we compare this, for example, with 2013, where Rolex introduced the Platinum Daytona as a anniversary model, it wasn't really well received. The moment that watch was introduced, it actually disappointed a lot of watch lovers. Everyone was waiting for the Daytona with the ceramic bezel in steel or even a Panda variation of a Rolex Daytona. But all they got was a really flashy, heavy, expensive platinum Daytona with an ice blue dial and it was called the anniversary. The watch wasn't well received when it was launched. This can also be the reason why the ceramic Daytona is as popular as it was when it was introduced in 2016. And still today, it is the most popular Rolex on the planet. I think Rolex tried to steer in a different direction when introducing this model. It's indirectly a celebration of the 60th anniversary of the Daytona, but it's directly a celebration of the 100th anniversary of the Le Mans races. This is the Rolex Daytona reference number 126529. Nine LN. The solid white gold Rolex Daytona Le Mans. The retail is in around the $50,000, but it's worth realistically in between the $200,000 and $250,000. That's a premium. Oh, and there we go. First IWC, the manual wound squelette or skeleton, as you can call that. Never seen that one before. I've only seen one before and actually not this exact model, it was a different model. This watch is a limited edition of 25 pieces. They really tried to market this as if this is like some off catalog, magic, extreme engineering, incredible Marvel watch. 
Um, for me, it's just a Portuguese with a half decent finished tourbillon. Nothing more, nothing less. I mean, the caliber is in house, and the caliber in this exact watch, which is referenced number AW546201, they made a specific caliber for this exact watch. To give you an idea, it costs a lot of money to develop a movement. The cost associated with developing a complete new movement starts from about a million dollars. So it is quite unique to find a caliber in this particular version, caliber 98920. To be fair, that caliber is based on a caliber 98900, but they still modified it. They still skeletonized it. That is big props. 43 millimeters in diameter. It's a big watch. It's not a small one, but to be honest, I'm f***ing hating this, <laughs> honestly. I'm not, I'm not loving this. It's an older watch to introduce the thinking tooth 2011, if I'm correct. Some sources say 2015, but it was 2011, 2010, actually. There's one on the market currently for 70,000 pounds, which is the equivalent of $89,000. I do think that that is significantly overpriced and it will that watch will never, ever sell for that amount of money. What we're putting on the counter? I would put around $75,000 on the counter. And I do think that people will struggle to sell it for that amount. As a former IWC ambassador and IWC fan, I completely do not understand why you like this watch, to be honest. This is everything IWC isn't. Like, this is... This is I Wanna Cry. Yeah, this is I Wanna Cry. IWC stands nowadays for sporty watches, for chronographs, and for formal watches, for not complicated models like this, or skeletonized watches like this. I don't really have love for this, to be honest. Then a watch I do have a love for is, is, yeah. And as you can see, the fund of the numerals and the subdials are actually really similar to the Le Mans Daytona we discussed earlier. That is a hint back to history. See those squares on the subdials? Also find that on the Le Mans Daytona. It's really cool. There's a few hints. This is supposed to be a John Player Special Rolex Daytona 6241. I'm not going to make any comments on the watch he has on his wrist because I simply don't see it. I love vintage Daytonas. I think vintage Daytonas are probably one of the most important watches ever. It's a timeless watch in every way possible. I simply can't see what he's exactly wearing and I've tried to find more details but I can't. If this is a correct 6241 this watch is worth at least 800 to 900 thousand dollars. That's no dog sh like. By the way it also means that this watch is 14 karat not 18 karat by the way. Shopify is genuinely the best commerce platform in the world, period. Every man and his dog uses Shopify from a big business or from a startup business. We use Shopify with our watch business, Pride and Pinion, and we sell tens of millions of dollars every single year. Our clothing brand, God Tear, which we also use Shopify for, and even I can use it, like building a website and building an inventory system and running reports to see if my business is actually making money. It's actually quite funny because in here, here I have Pride and Pinion Limited, where we just sold a watch for 2,000 pounds, and earlier this morning we sold a watch for 75,000 pounds, but also for God there, where we just sold one item for 68 pounds and 32p. It is genuinely the best commerce platform in the world for everyone that has a business. If you have a small business, if you have a mid-sized business, or even if you have a big business. I love the simplicity and the versatility, and someone like me, that is a bit of a tech, like, what do you call it? a person that can't even switch on a computer? <laughs> Attack even I can understand Shopify. So if you want to start your business or even change your current business to Shopify, go to the first link in the description now. And let me tell you, you won't regret it. What you see here is probably one of the most important watches in the history of watches, of wristwatches. A watch that is worn by the biggest superstars, including Eric Clapton has one, John Mayer has several, Ed Sheeran has one, $24.99. Top of my head, this is a third generation, second or third generation of the Patek Philippe $24.99. The 2499 is an extremely important reference number. Let me quickly discuss a wee bit of history of the perpetual calendar chronograph, because this is a perpetual calendar chronograph. The first ever perpetual calendar chronograph in the world was the Patek Philippe 1518, which was 
produced by Patek Philippe. But Patek Philippe at the time was known as a luxury watchmaker, but they weren't making complicated watches as a production. They were making complicated watches, but just on special request. The 2499 is what I would consider the king, the best, the most beautiful reference number in that series. The production of this watch started in 1950, 1951. People, can, people are arguing about that. Well, the 1518 was still in production. So this was introduced while well, the 1518 was still in production. This watch was in production for 35 years. And during those 35 years, Patek Philippe has changed that watch four times, or there's four generations of the 2499. Started with flat pushers. These are round pushers, but we saw round pushers from the second generation. So that's why I say it's second generation onwards. Watch was discontinued in 1985. And now I want you to guess, how many pieces do you think Patek Philippe made a year of that watch? A year? A year. 50 a year. That sounds like a low number, right? It's actually 10. There's in total 349 pieces ever produced of reference number 2499 across over 35, years. over 35 years. And that is a bizarre number. Let's put it this way, right? Worst case scenario, this watch he's wearing 2499 is worth about six, seven hundred thousand dollars. Worst case scenario. Best case scenario, it could go up to two mil or if not more. It's insane. This is the daddy of the daddy, right? This is one of the most important complications ever produced. The funny bit is Patek Philippe never made this movement themselves until recent. Actually, to be precise, until 2011, where they for the first time made the movement completely themselves with the 5270 as the reference. It's funny how the movement of a very important, very complicated watch from a very expensive watch brand, in this case, Patek Philippe, was never produced by Patek Philippe until 2011. They always used Le Mania based movements and they built their own modules on top of that. So from 2011, the perpetual calendar chronograph was complete and other made in house by Patek Philippe. So what are we putting on the counter for this one? I would put one mail on. Well, that's fairly shut up the country. <laughs> yeah, exactly. From extremely delicate, extremely important, we go to extremely chavy and extremely in your face, but may I add, extremely nice. I have wore this watch in California during Monterey Car Week. Someone was wearing this watch and I was like, Hey, you, come here. Give me that watch. And he came and he uh. gave me the watch. Like, not for keep. He, I was allowed to put it on my wrist. And I must say, photos do not do justice. On photos, this looks like an ugly piece of toy sh watch. Fact. But let me tell you, it is an absolute belter. A belter that represents still today a average value between four hundred and five hundred thousand dollars This is the Ceramic Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Perpetual Calendar Reference Number 26579CS. <sighs> It is mad, man. I would have never bought that. I would have never wore that until I really put it on my wrist and thought like, this is, now I get it. I just get it. You know what the real thing is? Watch collectors or watch people, people that go in depth about watch videos or watch nerds, right? Absolute watch nerds. Watch people are horrible people, usually very insecure. And this is why they use watches as a tool for them to, you know what I mean, right? Everyone shut this watch down when I was introduced, specifically the watch people. But whenever I put this on my wrist, I was like, I get it. And I know where this is targeted to. This is targeted to young, very successful, either athletes or professionals or business people. And I really, really, really like that. I think that that is the right direction. And it's no surprise that the first time I saw this watch was in Monterey Car Week. I like this watch, you know? Guilty pleasure. The 228396TBR, yeah. Um, I don't know, I find this a f***ing boring watch, you know? Put this $160,000 on the counter first, and then we'll go into depth, right? Is it on? Yes, sir. Right. Like, having English or having American people or having non-Arabic people wearing this watch is so f***ing pointless, it just defeats every purpose. I had the normal version of this watch, right? I enjoyed that watch. It's a functional watch. It's the first ever watch that had a full written day and, and date. Like, it is a historic piece. Presidential bracelet, platinum, also f the most important metal of them all, no bother. It is the daddy, but I just never really liked the Arabic hype, to be completely honest. The only reason why it is worth about $60,000 more, it's because of the Arabic numerals and the Arabic date. People consider that rare. Okay, collectability. Maybe it's collectability, right? Tom Brady is clearly a watch collector, right? And maybe this is the reason why he wanted that. You cannot get this dial anywhere else other than in the Middle East, by the way. 5712, 5711. Yeah, quite sad that that watch is gone. The a version of the Patek Philippe Nautilus time and date 
only. I remember going to America, buying this exact version, this exact watch, 2019, for $43,000. Then at a certain point, that was worth about $160,000 as well. Yeah. What did you sell it for? <laughs> I think I've sold it for 65, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah, so I made a few quid there, but no one could have predicted that spike, like that was insane. The white dial was definitely my favorite above the blue dial, to be honest. And I do really like the 5712. This is my new watch, 5712 Nautilus Steel. I do really, really want a precious metal Nautilus. F me, that would be amazing if I could look like that. What we see here is something really special, a 2006 introduced Reshot Mill RM. Well, the madness about this watch isn't the movement, right? Isn't the tourbillon. It's actually quite boring, to be honest. It's the first time a watch, instead of a main plate or a base plate, it actually featured tubes. These things, yeah. they're tubes. And that is holding the movement together. And that is insane because this movement is resistant to a lot of Gs. A lot of gangsters, a lot of Gs. That makes this watch extremely special. I've seen one a couple of years ago, but I've yet to see another one. And... As far as I know, there's none of the market today either. And I, I don't know, $250,000, maybe more. It sounds like $250,000 is cheap, but Reshot Mill in 2006 wasn't that popular, right? And models from that era weren't that popular and are still not really popular at all. And, and that's why I say $250,000, because it is unique. It is limited to 30 pieces. It is some engineering like i believe it took richard mill two years and several prototypes to really make this a functional piece which actually people don't realize they think a watch brand just oh here's a watch oh here there's a new watch a lot of times and we're not talking about daytonas we're not talking about that stuff but complicated watches like this are in production for many years and a lot of prototypes have to be produced first i find it really hard to value this i think realistically two hundred fifty thousand dollars for sitting on the right side i could be completely wrong i'm just looking at me how much would i want to pay for that watch that's a about right. Pretty sure he's watching a proper football game rather than American football bollocks. Yeah. Look at his glasses. Puzzle watch. Yeah. Don't know what to say, you know. 36 mil. Listen, when this was introduced, it was quite cool. Like, I mean, I was a wee bit puzzled, like, but that, that aside, it was Rolex doing something that we never expected from Rolex, which I really like. It was Rolex going out of their comfort zone, a bit of hippie move, which I don't like. Definitely not left wing hippies. Right wing hippies, if they are in existence, please show. You know what, I like it. I would wear it if it wasn't going for $300,000, let me put it that way, because that's how much it's going for. But you know what the thing is, right? People that have that amount of money to spend want things that are unique and not easy to get. This is not easy to get. He knows a thing or two about watches. That's what I see about his collection. He knows a thing or two about watches. And that's why he bought every shot meal RM052 Skull. 1.6 million, make it. 2 million. It doesn't really matter how much you put on because none of the market is for sale. It's just a f joke. That guy loves his watches. He just buys what he likes. He's interested in it. I know he has a lot of IWC watches, but I don't want this to video to become like the catalog of IWC, to be honest. Tom Brady, I don't know how to ask, but you clearly love YouTubers. Did a collab with Mr. Beast. Exactly. And I'm not much different than Mr. Beast, you know? Yeah, come on, I mean, come on, Tom, come on. Like, I mean, we. Send this to Tom. Let's do a video. Like, I mean. Yeah, some f***ing nuts watches, mate. It's insane.